What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 36 wide receivers as we head into week 11 of the fantasy football season. As always, if you are new to this channel, make sure you are subscribed. We do have a running back version of this video that is going to be coming out later today. You don't want to miss that. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these wide receivers. So I got the tier maker pulled up on the screen. As you guys can see, we got seven tiers to get through all 36 wide receivers here in today's video. We are going to be going from the elite wide receiver ones all the way down to those low end wide receiver threes. But let's kick it off in tier one. I got four wide receivers in this tier coming with Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and AJ Brown. Now look, we're not really debating on whether we are starting or sitting these wide receivers. All of these guys are obviously must starts in any type of format, any type of league style. But I do have Amon Ra as my number one guy this week just because of the difference in matchup in comparison to guys like Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Amon Ra, he plays against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are the 27th ranked defense against the wide receiver position so far this year, allowing 30.6 fantasy points per game to that position group. When you look at Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, they're both playing top seven defenses in the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tennessee Titans when it comes to giving up points to the wide receiver position. Those are just bigger differences. Obviously, all of these guys are elite. Like I said, we're not debating too much. So if you want to switch the tier around you want to put guys in a different order I don't really mind it the reality is I just did that because of the matchups everybody in this tier though we are playing no questions asked now let's move on to tier two tier two I have three guys in it we got Nico Collins coming in at number five number six Puka Nakua and number seven Tyree Kill now look Nico Collins he is a top five play to me he's been out for a long time with a hamstring injury obviously coming off of IR last week did not play in the Sunday night football game he is now on Monday night football it sounds like he is active it sounds like he is going to be playing at least that's the news that we have right now at the time of this recording so if he's active if he's in the lineup I am plugging him in a top five wide receiver no questions asked because the last time that he was healthy he was scoring more fantasy points per game than Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson he is elite with CJ Stroud under center so this is one of the best wide receivers in football and we are going to be playing him now Puka he's obviously been back in the lineup he's been very good since he's gotten healthy and Tyree Kill I have him here as a high-end wide receiver one but he does have a little bit of red flags with his profile right now this week he's dealing with a wrist injury he's been in a little bit of a slump and he has a bad matchup this week but when you hear that he's playing the Las Vegas Raiders you would think that that is a good matchup they haven't been a good fantasy football team but they are top five against the wide receiver position only allowing 22.6 fantasy points per game I think Tyreek Hill he's a little bit of a risky play I'm still viewing him as a high-end wide receiver one though there are very few wide receivers as talented as him in the NFL and when he's healthy and two is in the lineup which he's debatably healthy right now now you're still going to be playing him in your fantasy football leagues so let's move on to tier three tier three I have a total of six wide receivers and these are the low end wide receiver ones or guys I think can be low end wide receiver ones this week I got George Pickens at number eight number nine Cooper Cup 10 Debo Samuel 11 Garrett Wilson 12 Terry McLaurin and 13 DK Metcalf couple guys I want to talk about let's talk about some of these guys that have some good matchups the good news is all of the players in this tier there aren't really any bad matchups so we'll talk about the good ones George George Pickens has a great matchup against Baltimore this week. Baltimore, they have been horrid against the wide receiver position. I mean, you saw what they allowed Jamar Chase to do last week. They are dead last against the fantasy football wide receiver position. You're looking at this matchup for George Pickens. I think he should be able to feast deep with Russell Wilson in this matchup. I'm definitely comfortable playing him as a top 10 option this week. And Debo Samuel, he gets the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle is currently ranked 25th against the wide receiver position, allowing 29.6 fantasy points per game. Debo's been a little bit banged up as well. Well, I think it's only a matter of time before he gets on a roll and has himself a big game. It could very well be this week against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the only other player that I want to talk about, and speaking of the Seattle Seahawks, is DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf has been questionable with a knee injury for multiple weeks now. He obviously is coming off of the bye week, so we're hoping that DK Metcalf is back in the lineup. I am projecting him, obviously, to be back in the lineup if I'm viewing him as a top 13 option. If he's healthy, if you have him available to play in your lineup, you just play DK Metcalf if he's healthy. There's not very many wide receivers I would play above him even a little bit banged up you see I have him as top 13 so he is a guy that I'm putting in my lineup no matter what now let's move on to tier four tier four is those high-end wide receiver twos I got five guys in this tier total coming in at 14 Devontae Adams 15 Drake London 16 CeeDee Lamb 17 Zay Flowers and 18 Devonta Smith now there is a very bad matchup here for Drake London Drake London gets the Denver matchup so he is this week's victim of the Pat Sertan shadow coverage it is going to be tough 
for Drake London. Pat Sertan has been lights out against wide receivers this year. I, it's going to be tough for Drake London, man, to have a good game this week. He's going to get a lot of targets coming his way because that's kind of been the way that it's been going for Drake London. But this is a very tough matchup, only allowing 21.5 fantasy points per game from Denver. We are going to be a little bit cautious with Drake London, and that's probably why I have him down here. Otherwise, he's typically in that low end wide receiver one tier. Now, the only other guy I want to talk about in this tier is going to be Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith, he is questionable with a hamstring. I do project him to play, uh, but he has taken a little bit of a backseat to A.J. Brown. This offense obviously likes to run the football. Jalen Hurts is getting some tush pushes. Saquon Barkley is getting some rushing touchdowns. It's hard for a lot of these guys to feast each and every week because there is so many options available and not enough footballs to go around. Devonta Smith has still been very good for fantasy football. I still am looking at him as a wide receiver too, but I'm not looking at him as anything more than that this week. And he does play on Thursday night football, so we are going to have to be cautious with Devonta Smith because we need to know he's going to play. It's earlier in the week. He has a shorter week. He's a little bit banged up. So we're going to keep an eye on Devontae Smith. But I guess there's one more guy we should talk about. And it's CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb, obviously an elite wide receiver. Right now, the quarterback play, it is hindering him significantly uh, there in Dallas. It's going to be tough for him to be very reliable moving forward with Dak Prescott out of the lineup the rest of the year. It's unfortunate. If you had CeeDee Lamb, you had hopes that he could help you run to a championship. He looks like he's going to be pretty inconsistent the remainder of the way. So uh, that's why we have him here in this high end wide receiver two tier. Now let's move over to tier five. Tier five, we're looking at as low end wide receiver twos. And I got six wide receivers in this tier and lots of matchups to talk about because there's quite a few matchups to discuss. We got 19 Josh Downs, 20 Cedric Tillman, 20 21 Jaden Reed, 22 Darnell Mooney, 23 Calvin Ridley, and 24 T. Higgins. Now, there's a lot of bad matchups in this tier, so that's probably the reason why they've been all pushed down into tier five. 19 Josh Downs, he gets a matchup against the New York Jets. The New York Jets are the number one team against the wide receiver position right now, allowing 21.1 fantasy points per game. Jaden Reed, he gets a bad matchup against the Chicago Bears. Chicago is currently second against the wide receiver position so far this year, allowing 21.4 points per game to that wide receiver position group. Darnell Mooney, he gets a bad matchup against Denver. Obviously, we talked about that with Drake London, the third best. I don't expect Darnell Mooney to get the shadow coverage, so I don't expect the bad matchup to affect Darnell Mooney as much as I expect it to affect Drake London. And then you have a bad matchup for T. Higgins, who is also questionable with a quad injury as well. So we don't really know if he's playing in this one yet. It is a Sunday night game. It's going to be similar to the Nico Collins situation where he's questionable and we don't know if he's going to play. You might just play better options than T. Higgins and rather not wait on him here to make a decision on Sunday night football. But they get a bad matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. We talked about that with Jamar Chase, obviously uh, the seventh best defense against the wide receiver position. But T. Higgins, he has some other issues uh, right now that we need to get figured out. We need to get you on the damn field, T. We need to get you on the damn field. There is a good matchup in this tier though, and we will have one guy who has a good matchup. It is going to be Calvin Ridley. He plays against the Minnesota Vikings. They are 31st, so the second worst defense against the wide receiver position so far this year. I think Calvin Ridley could have another big game. He had a big game last week. He could have another big game this week. His end of season schedule is pretty good. Calvin Ridley is maybe a trade deadline candidate in your league that you might be able to buy for cheap. So Calvin Ridley is a guy that I'm looking at right now. Uh, probably the guy who has the biggest boom potential in this tier here of the low end wide receiver twos this week. Now let's move on to tier six. Tier six is going to be those high end wide receiver threes. I got six wide receivers in this tier as well. We're going to have Khalil Shakir coming in at 25, DeAndre Hopkins, Ladd McConkey, Juwan Jennings, Cortland Sutton, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now there's two matchups specifically I want to talk about. 26, DeAndre Hopkins. He has a bad matchup against the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills have been a top eight matchup against the wide receiver group all year long. I think this is going to be a tougher matchup for DeAndre Hopkins as well. Last week, he didn't have as big of a game. He obviously had the Pat Sertan shadow coverage. I think DeAndre Hopkins, he's going to be a great play in good matchups for the Chiefs, but they like to run the football. They like to establish the run. Hopkins is the number one wide receiver in this offense. There is no doubt about that, but I think this week it's going to be a little bit tougher unless this game turns into a shootout with Buffalo, but the way that these teams have been playing over the course of the year, it seems like it might be a little bit of a slower defensive methodical type of matchup, which maybe isn't going to be the typical Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes fireworks that we're used to. Now, the other player that I want to talk about, it is going to be a great matchup for Juwan Jennings. Juwan Jennings, he plays against the Seattle Seahawks. We talked about that with Debo Samuel. They have been one of the worst teams against the wide receiver position so far this year, giving up 29.6 fantasy points allowed per contest to those wide receivers. So Juwan Jennings, he had a ton of targets last week. He led the team in targets last week. I think he can have another solid week here for the San Francisco 49ers. And now moving on to my tier seven. Tier seven has another group of six guys to get through the rest of this video. I do have Tank Dell, Jamison Williams, Jalen Waddell, 
Brian Thomas Jr., Jacoby Myers, and Amari Cooper to finish off this list. Now, Tank Dell, obviously, he has Nico Collins back in the lineup, or at least that's what we're expecting. So the big games out of Tank Dell, the high target volume out of Tank Dell, I'm expecting that to come down a little bit. Jameson Williams, he gets a good matchup against Jacksonville. We talked about that with Amon Ross St. Brown, though. So this is a good matchup for Jameson Williams as well. He's a big play guy. Bad matchup for Jalen Waddle. We talked about that with Tyreek Hill. They get against the top five Las Vegas Raiders. We'll see what happens with this. Jalen Waddle hasn't had a great season so far either. Maybe he can bounce back in this one. Good matchup for Brian Thomas Jr. against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are 29th against wide receivers. The only problem for Brian Thomas Jr., Mac Jones is going to be under center. And that didn't bode well for him last week. So we'll see if they can kind of bounce back here this week. But I'm tempering the expectations with Brian Thomas Jr. Despite the talent of BTJ and despite the good matchup. Jacoby Myers, he gets a bad matchup against Miami. Miami is sixth against the wide receiver position right now. They have probably been a little bit overrated as a secondary because during that time with Tua Tungavailoa off of the field, they definitely uh, had lower scoring games. And that's because they were getting blown out and teams were running the football. So I think that that number is a little bit skewed. I'm not too worried about Jacoby Myers matchup, but they did look pretty good last week against the Los Angeles Rams. And then you got Amari Cooper sitting here at 36. The Bills, they traded for Amari Cooper and Amari Cooper has played like one game for them. He's been questionable with a wrist injury. We'll see if he ends up getting the nod in this one. I don't know if he's going to play. I think he's worth talking about. That's why he creeped in at 36, but there's still going to be a lot of information that we need to find out throughout the rest of the week before I'm comfortable moving Amari Cooper up my rankings. If Amari Cooper is active, him and Khalil Shakir probably get closer together in that numbered ranking, probably more like 28 and 32-ish type of range rather than the gap that you see right now between 25 and 36. So figured I'd just mention that one uh, for you guys as we got into the top 36 wide receivers. So there you have it, folks. That's my top 36 wide receivers as we head into week 11 of the fantasy football season. As always, if you enjoyed the video, if you found something entertaining, actionable, you just want to support the channel, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and go join the free Discord that is linked in the description. I'm in there answering your star sit questions, trade questions, waiver questions, anything you got. I'm in that Discord for you. Uh, so go ahead and join that and ask away. Like I said, it's free to join, so there is no risk in doing that. But with all of that out of the way, I have nothing else for you today. I will see you on our next video. But until then, peace out.